don't run from us, otherwise we'll haunt you forever, because we're America's most elderly <laughs> podcast, the pod people. I'm Texas Tease. I'm Leather Daddy Ben Sheets. <laughs> 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 More like leather pappy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Cleveland Mosher, a.k.a. wet skin mask face. <laughs> it really rolls off the tongue. I know, right? <laughs> Catchy, right? Well, gang, we wet just... Wet flesh did, mask face. We just came off of, uh, just minutes ago, finished watching... <laughs> Moments. <laughs> Just moments ago, we finished watching the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Didn't even have to drive uh, back from the theater. Nope. It's, it's on Netflix. Thank, Thank God, God we didn't, we didn't, have, didn't to. have to pay money for this movie. Yeah, other than Netflix fees. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but at least there's other stuff on there. It, it's something. Other Netflix originals, oh boy. Well, this is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, in true requel fashion, having the same name as the first film. Uh, It's a direct sequel to the original 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They're doing a Halloween, uh, a Halloween 2018, in more ways than one, really. Uh, This was directed by a man named David Blue Garcia, and it stars some people in it. And uh, it fucking was terrible. Yep. We knew this was going to be terrible. Yep. Uh, I think we've been cynical about this movie since it was first announced. Yep. Yep. I think we talked about it for the first time like two years ago on our predictions when it was just announced and there was like no information about it. Yeah. Uh, had somewhat of a... Just a twinkle of the milkman's eye. It had somewhat of a, a, a turbulent production. Uh, its original directors were uh, uh, two brothers whose names I don't remember. Just two brothers. Just two, uh, just two brothers. They uh, uh, quit due to creative differences. I see I, why. It seems like it was, it was pretty unclear whether they quit or were fired but creative differences was the reason so they got this guy david blue garcia who has done uh some things some things i don't think i think this is his feature film i think this is the first thing he's directed he has produced some other things and i he's done a couple of short films but yeah this is his his feature length directorial debut and uh boy Oh that, boy. One, that one's a whiff. Yeah, I'll say. It's steaming. Swing and a miss. Big old steaming. Rough time. Well, on last week's episode, you know, we, we talked about at the end, like, you know, maybe this would surprise us. Maybe, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe. It, would, it would turn out to be... It would turn out to be, you know, better than we expected. Uh, and, you know, I, I said that I would happily eat my words if that was the case. Nope. Sadly... Going hungry over here tonight, not eating any words. Yeah, well, let's let's start by talking about kind of the rollout for this movie. Yeah. Because, like, we had some mixed feelings going in, but, uh, you know, a week or two before this came out, we saw that Colin Stetson did the soundtrack yeah. for this film. Very surprising. Uh, you know, Colin Stetson famously did the soundtrack for Hereditary. Has done a lot of great solo yeah, albums. Yeah, just his solo, his, his solo work is incredible. Um, so that was a, a really promising aspect. Even that ended up being a letdown. Yeah, yeah, it's really underutilized. Um, There's like I also some wanted cool, to mention like industrial texturing. I'll give it that. But I think like contextually though, it just doesn't work. They're not using Colin Stetson's forte. Yeah, you know? yeah I don't know why. Well, I mean. Assumedly, he had creative control over the score for the most part, like you would yeah. think so. I don't know if he was just like – if this was just – he was phoning this in or what. Like the the score is is a lot of uh, – you know, they're, they're trying to sort of recapture like that scraping Toby metal, Hooper. metal sound of like the Toby yeah, Hooper Yeah, the industrial original. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I guess like Colin Stetson as a sax guy, like – you could just do some really out of tune honking on a saxophone and then like run that through some. Oh, you did. That was hereditary. Yeah. But it's just like, there's nothing like memorable in terms of like music to latch onto. It's like, it's literally just Colin Stetson's take on like a generic horror soundtrack. Well, the problem is, is that OG Texas Chainsaw like kind of set the foundation for that. It was one of the most notable and effective, like, 
industrial scores in music like at the time and and from then on after in horror like i mean it, i mean it, like silent hill has like has like like has texas chainsaw score. to thank yeah. for for that and all the rest like like down down the line of like famous industrial scores um but it's sort of one of the the earlier ones and because of that like if you try and do that now exclusively like that like it's gonna come off as generic like because i i, I want to say like i think that there was some cool texturing and some in some of those sounds well, and, and and contextually like you have those issues where it's like it's like a 75 year old leather face or whatever like and he's in, he's standing in like the the field of sunflowers and he's just like an old guy and he's walking along and you get this like industrial sound that's like an entire factory is like collapsing on you specifically like it's really epic and grand and hor- horrifying in its in its scale and it's just an old man walking through the fucking flowers like yeah. it's not it just doesn't it's it's the context it doesn't match like well, that's the thing like the original has a very subtle use of i would even say invisible use of its score yes where it's not emphasized but it adds to what's going on where this is just very loud it's front and center it's very and it, loud it's film. loud it's loud but boring i well, mean that's I yeah the shots are boring like like the it accompanies half the time too sorry yeah you're you're not wrong there but i mean i don't feel like this is a score that i would like put on while i'm working on something and you know as like background either like it's just boring it's just like some clanging on metal sounds just really loud you know and I, I say that as a person who's a fan of, like, industrial and noise music. And, like, I don't think this was an interesting score. But it feels appropriate for the rest of this movie, which was in many ways sort of trying to copy, like, a thin veneer of the original film without, like, having any real substance behind it. Mm-hmm. Do you think Toby Hooper got, like, an early cut of this? And he's like, I don't want people to like... Or not Toby to- Hooper, sorry. Toby Hooper Colin is Colin Stetson. <laughs> like, got, like, an early cut of it. Just didn't want, like, any association with, like, what his sound is or whatever. Well, that, that's how I found out that he w- was doing the score is because he tweeted about it. He's selling this score on vinyl. That was well, my first indication. So in production, sometimes, like, that comes with contract. You have to use your notoriety to, like, kind of help sell the film a little bit in some capacity. Like, like you know, actors, you know, like, part of yeah. their contract is doing, like, interviews and stuff like that like that's that's a tale as old as time i'm willing to you know possibly look past that as well frankly i, I hope he made some money off of it you know yeah, yeah. he's got plenty of other great works sure I'm, I'm yeah not, i mean yeah, it's, i'm it, not super worried about it it's not a a condemnation of colin stetson it's no. just it's just surprising because mm-hmm. like yeah. when we found that out like i i even said i was like well hey even if the movie sucks shit at least we know the music will be good and that was not even the case and mm-hmm. it's like you know Okay, you know, Colin, get get your paycheck, bro. That's, uh, that's the totally other fine. the other bit of marketing tie-in that I wanted to talk about is how they uh, introduced Leatherface in Call of Duty Warzone. I think it oh, was. Oh fuck! I forgot about that. <laughs> like like Emperor Palpatine and Fortnite kind of thing. Yeah, they premiered the trailer in Warzone or something like that. Jesus Christ! I don't play Warzone, so I, that was not on my radar at all. That's, why not? That's so that's so on brand. I feel like Netflix has like some kind of uh, collaboration with Call of Duty. Um, man, we knew this movie was was going to be bad, but when I started getting really worried was within the past week or so. I saw like f- maybe four or five tweets from people that you know, no idea who they are, being like, and they they all were some form of like a little movie that I worked on is coming out this weekend and you know it might not be everybody some people probably aren't gonna like it but if you just turn your brain off and think about how the times have changed then you know maybe you'll get a little something out of it and they were talking about this movie I saw like four or five of those tweets and I'm like uh oh uh oh -oh." people tweeting about a movie they worked on being like some people probably aren't gonna like this I was like shit (laughs) (laughs) like that's such a bad sign yeah Yeah. and trying and trying to be like turn your brain off and trying to be like if you don't like it you're thinking too hard about it you just didn't you just don't realize how uh how times have changed how it's not the 70s anymore Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, man. Well, that's what happens when like idiots write your movie. Like, I, and I shouldn't say that. Like, I, I, but like, it's just I. I mean, this movie feels like it was written by idiots. I know, I know. I just like I, I work in the industry, and I, I shouldn't. Fede, Fede Alvarez has a story credit on this, which yeah. is weird because like I generally really like his shit. Yeah, like, and that's why I'm I'm using like it. It it feels like that. I, I don't. I don't. I just. I don't want to say that it is or like. I just I don't like doing that even with movies I really hate but few things drive me up the wall more than when films like get political without saying anything like when they reference politics yeah. so we've mentioned it before on the podcast and it's I'm not ta- I'm not talking about wokeness I'm talking about like when you reference things like school shootings when you talk about that and you don't actually say anything about it. You don't yeah. make any points. You're just saying like, look, we're being relevant. I hate that. Well, I, I, I well, deeply hate that. And they're used as a costume in this turning. movie. Like for their paper thin characters, they're just a costume. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and and how vile is that? I'm not pulling an example out of my ass. And like Ben isn't like like exaggerating when he says like like that our our protagonists like entire backstories that they they were a victim in a school shooting. And there's nothing like about that in the film. Mm-hmm. Like there's nothing, that nothing like that. Any that has to do with anything. Well, and it's like if you're gonna conjure school fucking shootings, you need to say something that's, about that's it. Whole, and like, yes, it's horror, but it's it's a fucking entertainment film. You know, like like we're here to like watch some gore, get scared, and like have a good time, or whatever. And it's like not a horrifying and like, movie. Like like no. like scary. It, it, exactly, but like it's trying to be. You know, like sure. like it's and that's like that's the goal of like horror entertainment. It's wearing right? the face of a horror. And, movie. and like if you're gonna talk about that kind of stuff. Like, like, fucking bring your A game again. Like, it's stomach turning. Like, I, I, I think, it, I think it's pretty fucking vile to conjure school shootings without, like, actually, like, bringing anything to the table on that shit. I mean, well, honestly, the, most- the fact that you have such a visceral reaction out of it, it means at least you got more out of this movie than I did. Yeah, like, I can't even say that it's vile or stomach turning. It's just annoying. I think the yeah. most. Yeah. Just, just tone- You're right. I I'm, I'm giving the, it more credit. The, the, the most absurdest more part of that to me is she is essentially the stand-in for Franklin. Yes. And Franklin was, you know, wheelchair-bound, and instead she is a school shooting victim. Oh, my God. And it's like, oh, God, you're they right. went from one quote-unquote handicap to another But by the end, but she the, overcomes hers is it. trauma. You yeah. know what? You're right. I shouldn't find it vile. It's pathetic. It is. It's yes. pathetic. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, a better, it is. that's a better word for yeah. it. You're right. And, you know, it's... There's so much of that shit in this movie, like school shooting aside. The school shooting thing is actually like such a small aspect of the movie. As you say, they don't do anything with it. You know, like after the the most recent trailer came out, we even talked about a little bit in our last episode. What a lot of people have been doing, like the oh, Leatherface is canceled joke. You know, the cancel culture thing. Because in the trailer, we have the the scene where he goes onto the bus and everyone puts up their phone and is like, "You try anything, you're canceled, bro." And he kills all of them. That is annoying and stupid, and this movie is full of that shit, but I think it's important to point out that it's not, even as you said a few minutes ago, Cleve, like, it's not the wokeness that's the problem. No. It's it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, these annoying, like, fucking woke hipsters. It, the, the problem is that the movie doesn't know what its own message is. It has all of these things, but it's not saying anything about it. It's not a condemnation of it, nor is it in support of it. You know, there's there's so much just like politically confused bullshit in this movie where it's like, we know these are hot button words. These are things that people are going to recognize, but do we have anything to say about them? No, it's costuming. Yeah, it's paper thin. Yeah, yep. and it, totally. Great it's, example. It's total caricature in the film. Yep. Great example is early on our, I guess, protagonists are driving along on their way to Hartford or whatever the place is called, and they uh, they stop at a gas station and they're fueling up, and then a guy pulls up next to him and he's listening to like metal, but he's in like a big old pickup truck or whatever. It's like, it's like a normal sized pickup truck, you know. Well, no, like, it's, it's got the those, big tailpipes. It's one of those big jacked up pickup trucks that has like the two big diesel tailpipes coming up out. Of yeah, it. it's got the diesel tailpipes, I guess. But like, it's not like that crazy. Like we, we live in the south, we've seen way worse. Yeah. Like on a, on a daily basis, it's whatever. It's not that big of a. It's, it's par. But, it's par for the course. Yeah, but, like, he, the, he gets out and like he's he's like he he you know moves over or whatever and like he's clearly like open carrying 
and stuff. Yes. But like, he's got like a shirt on, like kind of over it. Like you almost, the, if they were just at a different angle, they wouldn't have seen it or whatever. Well, like thing, he wasn't the, like really flashing it. The camera really focuses on. It, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and so and, like one of the characters is just immediately like saying loudly to her friends, how tiny does your dick have to be to like, to carry a gun like but that? She's saying it like loud enough where she knows he can hear, which is awful. Like, well, the funniest part about it like, is intentionally. they're in the middle of rural Texas. Like, yeah, no shit. They shouldn't be shocked or surprised about this also, whatsoever. Yeah. They're, from, they're from the city, but they're from Austin. So they're from, te- they're, they live in Texas. This should not be a surprise to them that they go outside of the city. Seven hours outside. <laughs> Seven hours outside of the city, and a, a dude pulls up to a gas station with a gun on his hip. I mean, hip. You, like, don't, you don't even go, yeah, like, you need to go to, like, an hour or two outside Austin. You know, you've got, like, Waco right there. Like, you've got, it, like, would, you know, like, it's not it, that far. Yeah, I would get it if they were, you know, I would get it a little bit more if they were, like, New York yuppies. But they're fucking Texas yuppies. I think I think that whoever wrote this has never even been to Texas. I believe that, like earnestly, and you know. like. But so anyway, like she, yeah, she makes a comment about like, oh, how fucking little dicks do you have to be to like drive a car Compen- like that and have compensating um, for something much? Kind of sh- yeah, kind of shit. And like the guy is like just filling up his car, and he looks at him and he goes. Look, I don't think you understand that, like, feral hogs are a deal around here. They did a 30 to 50 feral well, hogs. they dick. kind of did. And here's my thing, right? Like, he, he says, like, like feral hogs are a thing around here, and, like, you know, I need a gun. And it it's done in a way where, like, yeah, like, it, it, they, they place, like, emphasis on the feral hogs thing because, yeah, they are trying to, like, reference 30 to 50 feral hogs. But but he, he doesn't say 30 to 50. It's not cartoonish. He's not, like... It's not parody. It's yeah. not like anything like he's just like, you know, like, oh, there's some feral hogs around here. And it's like, OK, what are you trying to say with this? Like, like, are still winking and not. It's a wink and a nod, yeah. but like. Um, well, also, it just goes to show like this movie has been in well, it was in production hell for a couple yeah. of years. So it just goes to show that it's like when they wrote that 30 to 50 feral hogs was like a new thing. I know. And it's just it's like I love I thought that was a very funny meme, but it's like two years dead now. Yeah. Well, also, it's and, a funny meme because of the 30 to 50 part. Yes. Like the idea of like an, an army of hogs like needing, coming through your backyard because of, yeah, like an assault rifle. 30 to 50 like it's, yeah, I need an assault rifle backyard, because of 30 yeah. to 50. 50 feral hogs let's remove all of that context real quick like um the, the film doesn't have isn't associating otherwise like it's just doing a meme bit otherwise it's just fucking scary movie and like you've got this guy and he's, he's saying look i'm carrying a pistol because sometimes feral hogs will kill you because it's texas because feral hogs will fucking kill you because he they will even like one feral hog will justify no he shouldn't he like well no the, because it's a shitty movie like yeah absolutely yeah. what is it trying to say then like are, because like later on we're supposed to kind of set up to believe like he is a good guy but they never like finish that thought um well i mean yeah he's never a bad guy he doesn't do anything you know harmful to to end to them and you know he goes after leatherface but then he dies you know they're kind of setting him up to be like the hero it's like oh uh, you know the the redneck is gonna come in and and save the rich city kids lives and you know they're gonna find some common ground and you know by the end our girl our school shooting victim is gonna be you know in support of the right to carry a gun and you know that kind of happens but they killed this dude off yeah not super long into the well, movie so i think you know and, and then to cut to cut forward a little bit just so we can f- finish out this theme you know they they meet mama like in the town or whatever and she's alice got Krieg. alice yeah. Krieg. Uh, I, I just i just wish that she could land like a like a like a, a good character arc in a good movie at some point soon that'd be cool um this is like hansel and gretel was all right but i mean she was one of the better parts of that movie oh easily yeah yeah, yeah. by, by my she's, I mean, she's, she's a better too, part in all things she's, she's too she, good for well, this movie she's too good for a lot of the movies she's in that's my point like absolutely anyway uh her character has a confederate flag outside of her house or whatever yeah. and she was just like oh well sorry i didn't really think about it that way it was like my grandpa's or whatever my and, great grandpa's flag it reminds me of him yeah or whatever and it's like okay you know like heritage or whatever but like you know at least they, they, they say it with like some sort of like something like a character might say with some kind of justification or whatever but here's here's the thing right she didn't know her great grandpa but but also on top of that like i mean maybe she did but like she she, she is old as dust uh, her character is like old as dust or whatever but the point is 
that what they're doing is that they're saying no one is safe from Leatherface. Like no one is safe from death because like the, the, the redneck guy, like he's set up to be kind of like maybe good, maybe bad. Our protagonists are the same where it's like, are we supposed to like them? Who fucking cares? They're going to be assholes half the movie. And so I said like early on, like, are they doing a midsummer? Because Midsummer has, like, the kids from the city, like, the college kids who are, like, f- the fucking worst, and they go there, and they kind of deserve to die. They don't actually, but my movie logic, they do. They don't know? understand the culture. They don't understand you the know, culture, they're, they're but, like, our main of, character sort of still dies course, yeah. in Midsummer. Like, and so, like, we still get, like, the, the, like, the world through the lens of the protagonist, and we know who to side with. And, like, and, and the, the, con- the conflict there is nuanced and deep. Well, the thing about this movie is that it's so lazy that it though it sets up like the two opposing sides like the 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 obnoxious like city liberal woke city liberals and then like the redneck country people with you know their confederate flag and shit it sets up those two sides but there's never a point in the movie where like those two sides try to relate to each other right you or they, they don't even investigate what like a small town you know, community would be like, Yeah. you know, they, they paint it through a lens that like everyone is hostile to each other. You see it with the sheriffs taking the old lady out. Yeah. If this was a small rural community, they'd know her well and treat her much differently. You know, presumably there would be a much different relationship with all the community members and you'd see some dynamics there. You'd see more, you know, if if we're comparing this to Midsummer, we'd see more of the practices of that community. Pretty much all this movie has in terms of that small town is there is just no, there's no community. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like they they establish that whatever the name of this town is, Harlow or whatever, is a ghost town. We'll get to the conceit of the film in a minute, which is really fucking annoying. But like. The only people who live in this town that we see is we've got Alice Craig, who owns the orphanage, and Leatherface lives there. We'll get into that. The sheriff and his deputy, and uh, uh, Truck Redneck. Yeah. That's it. Those are the only members of the of the quote-unquote community that we see. Other than that, there's nothing there. Wait, there's also the gas station guy. Oh, okay, yes. Does he get any payoff? Guy. Uh, he's the one who calls Sally later. To oh, that's let her right. Know that Leatherface is back. We'll and that's all he does. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, I just, I just I, we've we've danced around like what brings the characters to this place in the first place, which is <sighs> one of the most insufferable yeah. plot devices I've seen in a movie in a long time. The whole conceit is that this this group of young Austin yuppies are going out to this ghost town because. One of them is, like, an Instagram influencer or something. Yeah, well, it's, like, the couple are, like, cooking influencers. Yeah, they're, they're like, in, they're like Instagram cooking influencers or something, and they have, like, bought this town, this little ghost town in the middle of nowhere, Texas, to bring all of their yuppie friends out from the city to like revitalize the community or something like that so it's dumb. very it's very unclear what their actual goal is so stupid they want to start a little boutique community little, yeah seven hours away from austin yeah and the, the, ga- <laughs> the gas station no the, as soon as we get started like people will come out you know the gas station guy makes a, a heavy-handed uh, gentrification reference but I mean, they the they kind of do, thing that like a gas station work like attendant like seven miles out of Austin yeah. would, would give a shit two they, shits about. They do they do bring in a busload full of their friends though. Yeah, like that's the thing. But like, there's even so little payoff with that. That only serves. I mean, I guess there's no payoff, but it's it's underutilized. I think the whole point of the busload of friends coming in is just to set up Leatherface going onto the bus later and mur- and murdering them all, all at once. Yeah. It um, would have been funnier if they had, like, scattered throughout the town and the film was, like, was like Leatherface, like, going through this little abandoned Texas town, like, finding these people who are bad at hiding and, like, pulling them out and, like, gutting them and shit. Yeah. And so they're like, I don't know, fuck it, we'll just kill them all at once. Can you imagine, like, shooting on that bus, too? That's probably days of shooting. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, like, the ugh. thing is with the the whole conceit, it's such a broad and heavy handed like caricature of like Gen Z, quote unquote, and yeah. 
influencer culture and all the shit and it's like it has nothing to really say about any of that stuff it uses it again as an outfit and a backdrop well and it feels like it's like it's loosely trying to mock these people but they end up being like the heroes Again, it's confused. It doesn't know what it's trying to say or do. Yeah. It's like they're not doing our, Midsommar. Our heroes end up being the school shooter girl and her older sister, who is one of the most insufferable characters in the film. Yeah. She's the one who's making the, the fucking, uh, like, overcompensation little dick jokes about well, the, the truck guy. Yeah, I mean, they kind of come around on that. Yeah, she she learns her lesson, sort of. She feels bad because when they're trying to steal this old woman's home from her. She's literally the worst person. That she, yeah. They, no, not, not the old person, but, like, her. Like, the, the, the girl. The girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, like she, like, they're they're all the worst in that scene. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like they, they handle that, like, horribly. And I mean, that's that's what sets Leatherface off, you know, after the events of the first movie, presumably he ran away from his family. We never find out what happened to them. And I guess he went to an orphanage, which doesn't make sense. He was, he was an a, adult. He was an adult man um, and a, a deeply mentally unwell adult man. And like they wouldn't just put him in an orphanage. He would be sent to like they wouldn't uh, put him in one. But like I can see like the per- like a person who owns an orphanage like tanking sympathy on, you know, like someone. Yeah, yeah but then all it takes is one Lenny situation. Right. To also spoil like spoil the whole bunch. Yeah. Does that yeah. does that mean that like yeah, Leatherface was like doing janitorial work like at an orphanage where there were like children? And he wasn't like murdering them yeah. or like you know well, being yeah. awful. Like it doesn't well, make any she, sense. She 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 keeps calling. Oh, that's one of my boys. He's one of my boys. And it's like we see the picture of him with like all of the other kids, and like his face is scratched out. And it's super fucking confusing because this film treats him like he was like a teenager when he went to the orphanage. But in the <laughs> in the original movie, he was definitely a full grown adult man, big man, which like. Also means that in this movie he is at best in his like early seventies. He's like a if, big man with probably, hairy arms. He's probably in, in his eighties. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's and it's like mm. they 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 Michael Myers him in this movie. You know they turn him into like an unstoppable killing machine. And it's like I get it. It's a slasher movie or whatever. Well, but it's like but you're it, just it, seeing it, him it, haul ass through all these set pieces, and then you think, oh yeah, this guy is eighty something years old, right. just hauling they, ass. Well, the, the thing, the thing is, is, in the original movie, all of the people he kills is because he takes them by surprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, Literally, man. like every single one of them, he catches them by surprise, and then at the end, when it's just Sally left, then she's on her own, and he's scary because he just is like. Tired Tireless. He just relentlessly chases her through the forest with his chainsaw. Well, and, you know? and the original has such a less is more approach um, to the point where I, I think my favorite example of this is in the original where, you know, Leatherface opens the door and grabs the yeah. dude. Yeah. The red and, door. Yeah. Slams it. Bangs him on the head, yeah. pulls, hauls him through, and slams the door. It's so good. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. And we get almost uh, an homage scene in this one with the uh, the the head chef guy um, who uh, is searching yeah. the house for, uh, I guess, the title of the house or something. Yeah. And uh, he... It's uh, unclear whether they actually bought the place or not. Yeah. He gets pulled through a door by Leatherface and instead of getting any sort of subtlety you see directly Leatherface hitting him and gore and blood and then he stumbles out towards the frame just to make yeah. sure we understand what happened they, they make sure to have a door you know on the left side of a staircase so it, it it's reminiscent of the house in the original one it's there's so much of that just that just like lazy <laughs> remember this yep. but it's like it's almost more insulting because they don't even have uh the decency to hit you over the head with it it's just kind of like uh, i guess here it is remember <laughs> kind of kind of and then and then they do just beat you over the head with it some of those kills are cool i, I will say you know uh I, this movie is dog shit 
it does have its moments. Sure. There are some there are some uh, pretty good practical effects. Um, pretty great, honestly. Like like the, the when the uh, Damien is that his name? Uh, Dante. 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 Oh yeah, Dante. Like Devil May Cry, Dante. Yeah. Um, when he turns around, or I, I guess you know, Dante's Inferno, but yeah. whatever. Joe um, uh, he 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 turns around and uh, he's got that wonderful scar across his face, and like his whole jaw is opened up, and it looks really good. This movie. Yeah, I think that's. I think that one was actually mostly like, CG, but it looks it looks good. It was good CG. Like frankly, it looks good. And, uh, but like when they find when when Sally finds the uh, the corpse of Alice Craig later in the sunflower field with the face skinned, like that's a practical, that's a prop. It looks very good. Yeah, it looks great. Um, like every pretty much every kill, I will I will the, say it, it's the same thing about Halloween Kills, right? Like the murders themselves weren't the problem. Yeah, and and honestly, once again, I'm I'm amazed that you can have a film with murders this good. That pisses me off so much. Like, like I, I want to be it's happy. Just everything else, it's everything else everything is so else. bad. Like, the and, little... and it's, I guess, it's just additionally frustrating too because like the production value is like so great. I mean, yeah, they shot this in like fucking Bosnia or whatever, but like I think Bulgaria. Y- y- know what I said? Eastern Europe. But, uh, the uh, <laughs> I can. Um, but isn't uh, you know like yes yeah, so they shoot it in in fucking Bulgaria or whatnot? They built, like to, they for built this little. But they, like, built they this still little built town. like full sounds like that like like full stages and shit and like full sets and all of it. Like it's, I mean for the outdoor still, like, for budget. the outdoor stuff. Yeah, I mean there at the end of the credits there was a lot of like uh, uh, Canada stuff. Mm-hmm. Um and you know film tax credits given by Canada. Yeah. So, so I so like, sure that they, exact thing they shot believe the is the stuff. problem yes. is because they built all of this stuff it's so clean. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't feel grimy and lived in. Yep. Yeah. And that's the ultimate problem. It, like even in the areas like the house it looks artificially yes. dirtied. Yep. Yeah, like even even when well, she, even, the even when the girls crawling down, right? even when the girls crawling mm-hmm. around in the crawl space under the floor when Leatherface is like chasing her and trying to cut up the floor, it's like the crawl space is it's like fake cobwebs, it's dirty, but it's like so artificially dirty. Yeah, it's like a bunch of fucking fake cobwebs, and they've got this like really clean blue light, you know, shining through. And it's like you compare that to like Resident Evil Seven, where you're like crawling through a space and there's like fungus like dripping off the walls and like rats to, like crawling up your asshole. Like, like it's so much. Like it's so Toby, good compared to the fucking Toby Hooper Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm-hmm. a film that made on is a fraction like, of the budget, a film made on a, a shoestring budget that has such a distinct and tangible feel and atmosphere to it it's so hot it's so sweaty like it makes you feel unclean just watching it and the stories from production of them shooting that dinner scene for like eight hours and it was like 130 degrees in the house with all the lights and there were real human bones in on that set and real animal guts and people kept having to leave to go fucking vomit because the smell and the heat was so unbearable and you can feel it you can feel it in the movie and this movie is so just clean and clinical and devoid of any of that and that's one of the things that's so fucking insulting about this movie. You know, we were talking throughout the movie about, like, whether this is better or worse than the 2003 remake. And I've fallen, like, somewhere in between where I think that technically it's a better movie. And there are things I like about this movie more than that. But I think this movie is more insulting to the original yeah. Texas Chainsaw's legacy. Like, somehow. And, like, yeah. you, yeah, y'all can weird. Yeah, y'all can go back and listen to that that episode or you, you've already heard it's it. One of the, um, it's one of the lowest rated films we've ever had on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. And, and, like, and, like, this is... Remake. Yeah, this is... I, I, I personally I'm hot off of it, so maybe that'll change over time. But I think that this movie, like, uh, yeah, this movie is way more offensive to me. And like, uh, I, oh God, I shouldn't use that term, like, over a fucking horror movie. But like, it is, it, it, it is like it's offen- more it's offensive to the to the original film's legacy. I yeah, think. it's pretty gross. But like, I think it is. The yeah, the, the other film is like bad, but like, it's still got Arnie it's Hammer terrible. and Army Hammer. You know, Arl- 
Arlie Ermy. Arlie Ermy. <laughs> <laughs> I always get him and the other guy mixed up. Yeah, no. Uh, t- <laughs> two people, two actors who are absolutely nothing alike, separated by generations. One of them is alive and one of them is dead. Well, well but they, the are uh, are uh, they they both have like a single syllable first and last names, uh, and they both start with A. No, not neither of those no. things. <laughs> Army Hammer. That's two syllables each. R first initial R Lee one oh, syllable. Oh, it's not R Lee. No, no. R <laughs> Lee Ermy. Oh, I always thought it Jesus was it was Arlie, like is is an is one word. I've always heard Arlie Ernie. This is almost as offensive to me as this movie was. <laughs> I know who he is. I know he did the that war movie and and shit. But he sure did that war movie. That one war movie. You know, yeah, the one where he does the shouty. <laughs> the one where he does the shout. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Come on, that's enough. It is the it is the war movie with a shout. Full Metal Coat. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, full Metal Alchemist. But uh, he, he is he does Full Metal Alchemist as the army man who gets angry. But uh, Colonel angry, Mustang. You know, I think that's what it is. Is he always plays like military characters? So I always think his his name is Army. <laughs> Instead of R. Lee, I think R. Me. You know, uh, that's what it is. is. This is a this is a bit of a tangent. But that's, <laughs> that's actually that is actually how he got his start in acting. In Full Metal Jacket, he was not originally hired for that role. He was consultation because he was military. He that's was dope. a marine. Yeah. They had him on set, and he was teaching the actor who was playing <laughs> that role how to basically abuse these young uh, these boot camp kids and uh they were just like Kubrick was just like oh well he's so good why doesn't he just do it why do we need this other guy why do we need him to teach him for the other guy and that's how Arlie Ermy <laughs> became an actor <laughs> that's so good yeah so that's what it is is I uh yeah I, I we had to figure it out but it's it's I used to, I I've always just heard Arlie Ermy so I thought his name was A-R-L-Y Arlie but it's R. Lee, Lee Ermy. Ermy um uh and and he's an army man He's an army man. So I always thought it was Army Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> army Ernie sounds like a like a Muppet. like Beetle Bailey's friend or something. <laughs> it does. It's so specific. <laughs> Fucking Beetle Bailey. God damn, that's a yeah, that's a Paul boomer Ryan. reference there ever yeah. was. <laughs> <laughs> that is a boomer reference. Yeah. But when I was a child, I even thought yeah, I was, the Sunday funnies. When I was a child, I did used to, I used to love it's reading so the Sunday funnies. Oh god, I used yeah, to love dude, reading same. the Sunday funnies. And, oh, and Beetle yeah. Bailey, Beetle Bailey, yeah. was one of them. Beetle was, Bailey, he was always uh, there. He was oh, always there, right next to Hagrid the Horrible. Hagrid the Horrible. Yeah. 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 Not Hagrid the Horrible. <laughs> it's Harry Potter. Yeah, but anyway. We should I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Oh, I, anything um, to not talk about this movie for a second. But the whole real, whole, I, I did bring that up for a reason. And that is that that's at least that, that the 20. 20- 2003 like yeah. chainsaw massacre movie like it had some goofy fun stuff in it and like somehow at least making leatherface into darth vader which is like a big point i had about that movie it has some merit like at least it's still trying to like pay tribute you know like it's paying tribute horribly but like i don't know like it's at least it was fun because Darth Vader is fun. It's and Darth, not fun. Like, See, it is not fun at all. Uh, it was, that was an awful just, movie. I think you're just too fresh the thing off is, of this yeah, movie. But yeah, the thing is, yeah, thing is with this one, it really it, it falls thing, into guess, yeah. the trope of its time, much like the 2003 one did. Yeah. And it doesn't do it well, just like the 2003 one did. You know, like, I think the qualities of this one are things that are generic in its subgenre of requels at this point. Yeah. You know, the the quote unquote creative kills, like we've seen these kind of kills a billion times. Yeah. The gore, all you know, the 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 blue and yellow, uh orange lighting everywhere. The Lori Strode character coming None back after fifty oh years. God. Awful. You know, it's just so trite and like we did even, uninspired. Un- know, I think, honestly, it's uninspired. I do think that the people who wrote this, like, and again, it's why, like, I I use the term, like, it feels like, and again, feels like. I'm not saying it was, but like, it feels like it was written by idiots because I feel like whoever wrote this was being earnest to themselves. Like, they really felt like they were doing the right thing and were just 
deeply, deeply misguided. Like they felt like, yeah, we're going to represent like victims of Columbine. We're going to represent, uh, you know, like Leatherface. And we're going to go back to like the roots of it. And like it's going to people are going to care and we're going to care and, and, and just missed all of the points. That's my belief. I don't know. It's probably a mix of both. And then you've just got marketing bullshit. Well, yeah, I think on top of that, I think it's just being overbaked in development hell. Yeah. Like, I think one thing I remember hearing about is the, the Franklin stand-in girl, the one who was in the school shooting. She was originally also supposed to be in a wheelchair. Oh, geez. Right? She mm. became paraplegic from a school from shooting. From school shooting. And then they yeah. decided not to do that. Yeah. I think there was some controversy around the time of that announcement because they had cast a non paraplegic person oh my God. to be the Oh the so they listened to Oh oh so so here's here's the real mistake this movie did. It listened to Twitter. <laughs> That's the real Correct. mistake. Let's People talk about mistakes. the the Lori Strode stand in for a little bit. Because her yeah. inclusion in this was particularly baffling to me. Because, you know, at the very beginning of the film, we hit kind of an intro sort of recap of what happened of sorts. They're playing yeah. this Texas Chainsaw Massacre documentary on the TV in the gas station. Yeah. They're retelling the story of how she was the, the only survivor. And for 50 years, she's been searching for Leatherface. Yeah. After she got away, she became a Texas Ranger. So she could try to hunt him down. And for 40, 50 years, she's been hunting Leatherface. With no leads, him. even though... Like, Jesus Christ. Even though she knew the family was around the area as well. Yeah, she she could identify the father who owned the gas station. She could identify the the brother like she knows where they live. And that's another thing is like this movie makes no effort to be like what happened to the rest of the family? How did Leatherface end up at this orphanage as a 30-year-old man? You know. Also, it just well, she like, I she she moves and lives like ten minutes away from this ghost town, right? And over the the course of you know presumably like fifty years, she had never any inkling of an idea that Leatherface was so close to her. Right? Yeah, doesn't make any sense. And you know, it just like I know that the legacy of this movie, you know, uh, of the original movie, is or the franchise, rather, is Leatherface as this figure. But in the original movie, yes, he's the one who chases her around with a chainsaw, but it's very obvious that he is, like, a barely functional, mentally ill adult who is being abused by his family, who, yeah. is, who is deeply, deeply unwell and is basically acting as muscle for his psychopathic cannibal family. It's almost tragic. It is. Yeah. He is. He is a in in the original movie. He is a kind of pitiable character. He's monstrous. He's scary. But you see the way he behaves and the way the father like characters like hits him, him and yells yeah. him yells at him well also you know, like like again like like he he dresses like as the mother as at the, the dinner mother. table like yeah. like there's also like really strong implications of sexual abuse as exactly. well exactly like he and it's like the the franchise has just locked on to him as like this big scary villain who wears a human he's face. iconic right and and i mean Ugh. he and i mean he is Technically, he is sure, sure. he is iconic, but especially for a movie like this that is a true quote unquote requel that is in the Halloween 2018 fashion, saying "fuck the canon of the rest of the franchise." This is a direct sequel to the original film and nothing else. And to still in this movie completely miss the point of who and what Leatherface is, and just instead treat him as a big lumbering unstoppable brutish killer well they, there's mean, such a missed opportunity there right like you have a few residents of this otherwise ghost town you could literally do the same thing as the original where like the original you have the small town where they were you know killing people and you know butchering them for meat yeah and selling it to the rest of the town essentially 
Like yeah, you could you could go that route of having the town be evil, or you could have the town be such a close knit, supportive community that they know about Leatherface's past, but they've they've you know kept him stable and they've been protecting him for all of these years and so that's why he hasn't been killing because they recognize that like he was just lashing out from the abuse and then you have some you could have something in this movie where like you know he could, he still gets killing the same way alice craig dies his his surrogate mother figure dies so he snaps starts killing again but if there was more of a sense of community in the town then you could have other people in town like trying to stop him trying to talk to him trying to persuade him like hey this isn't who you are you haven't done this in 50 years you know you're more well adjusted you know you don't need to do this oh that there- would have been dope there's there's so many opportunities for them to do something interesting with the idea of Leatherface as presented by the yeah. Toby Hooper Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But instead it's like, no, it's 2022. We need another Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's been eight, fucking 10 of these other fucking movies where Leatherface Recals is are just, popular. Where Leatherface has just been a big scary killer, so that's all he is in this movie. That That's what he needs to be, so that's all he is. There's no nuance whatsoever. And it's just it's it's frustrating. It's I like I don't know if like the new screen movie like coined that term, but like that's the first time I've heard I heard a requel. But I'm really glad they did because like like that it's it's a very useful. It, yeah, term. I've always just been calling it soft reboots. Yeah, but, but like, requel is, is, is a requel. Yeah. Yeah. Like I know it's even like said it kind of like as a joke, like in Scream. But it is it is it's really good, handy. It's a good term. And for also it. like thank God Scream came out like right before this too. Like incredible. Well, man, and like seeing this movie so hot on the heels of both Scream Five, but also halloween kills yeah. which like the parallels between this and halloween kills are like these the, these movies are like in lockstep in a lot of ways this movie is worse though. i think this movie yeah. is like which is, is like trying something. to be in lockstep and is like tripping over itself well, like it's yeah, like trying yeah. to be, and again we did not like halloween kills at all and uh like it, it makes halloween kills look great by comparison this, this movie this movie the production started in like 2019 2020 so it's pre-halloween kills but post halloween 2018 and it very much feels like the the genesis of this movie was trying to be like hey this worked. look at look at what they did with with the halloween 2018 remake they did a good remake that's just a sequel to the original and you know like does a good job of paying homage and it's just and then it gets caught up in development hell and it happens to come out just a few months after halloween kills which totally undid all of the goodwill that halloween 2018 created this is why you gotta protect your legacy man this kind of shit you know like what amazon's trying to fucking do with lord of the rings like, i mean you gotta fucking protect your legacy shit the the, the legacy of texas chainsaw massacre was, was gone, long, gone long, for a long, long, long ago. time yeah. the last texas chainsaw film we got is one that i actually have seen which was texas chainsaw 3d which came out in 2012 i think or 2011 which is you know i haven't seen it in years but probably a worse film than this yeah. uh it does it stars alexander daddario and the one of the dumb things about that movie is that it's set up in a flashback at the beginning that she was an infant she was like a baby in the original texas chainsaw and that like when the police showed up to the house to like arrest all of the 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 family and you know the idea uh, of a baby living in that house is the funniest shit i've ever heard well here's the thing she was a baby in 1974 but the film is set in 2012 and she's a college student so the time doesn't make any sense at all. She should be like 40 something years old in 2012, but instead she's like 20. Damn, we better put this baby into cryostasis. It doesn't make any sense. There's a, a scene 20 years. Was, there's a scene from that movie that I'd forgotten that was been going around lately where Leatherface is chasing her through a carnival and she tries to climb over a fence but can't get over it so she grabs onto the the Ferris wheel and it goes up and she just doesn't realize that it comes back down cuz Leatherface just stands on the other side <laughs> just waits for it to come down and she's just like screaming as the Ferris wheel's coming down he's just standing down there <laughs> a terrible movie terrible movie alexander daddario and i think tay diggs is in that movie as well i am so excited for you to see texas chainsaw 2 tease i'm excited to see another like, good texas chainsaw it's, it's not grounded 
No, that's fine. But I don't it, need. I don't need grounded. I just want good. Right. But it's it's such a fun fucking movie. Yeah. yeah. And, and like they do the smart thing of not just doing same but different. Yeah. They do. They go in a completely di- yeah, different. Yeah. They go hard different, it. and it's fun. And like because it, and it allows like the legacy to be maintained. And really, honestly, surprised me because like like why not just do if you're gonna like fine do the soft reboot thing, do the requel, but like you could do like Texas Chainsaw three. You know, you can just have it be like a continuation of the first two. That's fine. Honestly, I I just wish this movie was campier and a little yeah. more is it, self-aware. Isn't it, is it Bill Paxton in two? Who Bill Mosley. Bill Mosley, right. Yeah. Um, sorry, both character actors. Um, but like Bill yeah, Mosley, like bringing him back. If, you know, like the, he was fun. Yeah. They almost I, did. There I was a there was a movie like, that like died in production hell that was supposed to be, it was called An American massacre or something like that like that it, it it never it was it was never made um but he was trying to get it done he just ended yeah. up doing uh house of a thousand corpses and devil's yeah. rejects with Rob I, instead. like yeah. i said i i just wish this movie was campier and more excessive you know i look at something like yeah. piranha where mm-hmm. there's such a sense of fun to it where you get very excessive sequences much like the bus sequence we have which we should talk about further but it's very tongue-in-cheek and campy and there's a sense of fun permeating it where this is very self-serious it's and, dreary yeah, yeah and dreary and sanctimonious i think the school shooting stuff is a great example of it's that it's sanctimonious, sanctimonious it's sanctimonious dude. but it's unclear what it's sanctimonious about yeah it's, it's just referential yeah. it's yeah. totally aimless it's like got this sense of like self-seriousness and superiority to it yeah but it's not it's like what are you what's your message what are you trying to say yeah honestly they should have like taken cues from like the the town in uh cabin fever right yeah like just give the the characters some pancakes pancakes (laughs) pancakes yeah i mean (sighs) at least that's something at yeah. least, like, I can, like, react to that. At least I, like, have, have, yeah, have exactly. thoughts on it. That's the thing. Like, I, I, yeah. I could... I would be much more forgiving of a bad Texas Chainsaw if they were trying to just be fun with it. Yep. But it's like they're all, they, all of these movies, they always try to be so serious and scary. And it's just like they just miss well, the point. Well, again, too, and it's, it's just like the, the fucking industrial, you know, the whole time. So, like, every time, like, like Leatherface, like, fucking scratches his butt, like, it does, like, a, you know, again. Yeah. And it, it's not, you're undercutting, like, the, the, the actual impactful moments like you need to have quiet you need to pace yourself you need mm-hmm. you need to like 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 yeah. let things calm down a little bit and then scare people back up wake them you know like with with a horror moment again like going back to like the 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 incredible like the red door in the original like like it's yeah. quiet for a long time as he's looking mm-hmm. around the house and you hear all the creaks and cracks and then suddenly just like like leatherface just lets out a pig noise and whacks him over the head and slams the door in and it's quiet again yeah and Ah, oh, you need that. You need that. Or, you need that or silence. like when, or like when the other girl like stumbles and falls into the bone room in Ugh. the original one. It's just like, yeah, there's so many of these instances of just like the silence being shattered by something like really grotesque, and then just like it, the violence is so quick, so short, and then it's over. I think in the uh, in our original review, I called it ambient horror. Mm. And that's really what it is. It's, you know, very environmental horror. And it's less about the actual violence and more about, like, the oppressive heat and nature of the uh the location well yeah i mean it's it's real violence it's not it's not extended it's not exaggerated it's sudden and unexpected and horrifying and then it's over and just like that Mm -hmm. you know and that's that's what makes it feel real that's what makes it feel authentic that's how violence happens in real life yeah you know you don't get you don't get the the build up to it. You don't see that. You don't know. Ooh, somebody's about to die. It's just like all of a sudden it happens. Mm-hmm. All of and, a sudden you're driving along, and all of a sudden you're t boned by an eighteen wheeler. And, and here's know, the like, thing too. Like this is like. 
like we're millennials like going back and watching that movie and saying that you know like oh, yeah we're, we're we, we have been so primed by jump scares throughout our youth and it's well that's a film with a fucking enduring legacy that's timeless yeah but like, like, the, like the fact that no one can still imitate it that's the thing is like like it's still it still scares you because like it's so well done you know like yeah. and it, it understands how to do that and it doesn't have like fucking bullshit violins building up to that sequence or whatever else Oh, it's yeah. so it's such it's such a, a film of the 70s too. Mm-hmm. like honestly the 70s is my favorite decade for horror yeah. because it, it, they just did horror differently and the fact that the original Texas Chainsaw is still so good to this day 50 years later this movie is already dated it's all like the the 30 to 50 feral the feral hogs joke yep. is already a dead meme because they shot this and then sat on it for two fucking years before they could release it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's already a dead meme, and the movie came out today. Yep. It's really fucking frustrating. I will say, I would like to talk about a couple of the things that I liked about this movie. <laughs> a couple of the very small things that I liked sure. about this movie. We've talked about the kills. Pretty much all of the kills are good. Yeah. Uh, redneck dude gets his head smashed in with a hammer, and they built a fake head and smashed it. Looks very good. Looks great. I actually uh, like the Leatherface design in this movie. I like how Leatherface looks aesthetically in this movie. I don't like the way his character is You mean handled. wet wet flesh mask? You yeah, should elaborate mask. on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I should, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, so this is, this is one of the, the first, like, really, like, kind of stupid moments to me, is... Mama uh, has like a heart attack. They're 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 in the sh- they're in the sheriff mobile and they're trying to get her to the hospital. She dies in the back. Leatherface doesn't take well to that, and he he kills the cop in the back of the car in a really cool way. He just snaps his arm in half again, like with like superhuman strength. Yeah, and like like and then stabs him in the throat with his arm with his bones own bones. Yeah, yeah, like the radial radius cool and ulna, just like like into his fucking like throat, like fucking cool dope. It makes no goddamn sense. But who cares, right? Like, like I'm, I'm yeah, happy I'm to put that, that shit. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy to, for that. I'm shit. happy to put aside the fact that this man is 78. Like that, I, I don't care. That's go for it. Who, who cares? But like, uh, anyway, he he does that. That's dope. And uh, the car stops or whatever. And he takes the sheriff guy out. Um, the other guy in the car gets shot. Who it doesn't really matter. But uh, he he then just out on the road in the middle of nowhere, just like takes a knife and like cuts off the dude's face perfectly, which is not how skinning no, he works. Takes, he takes a piece of glass and he cuts off. Oh, mama's. oh he right. Cu- he cuts with off a, mama's face. Right. Yeah. With a piece of glass. With a shard of better, glass. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's, that's gonna that's efficient. Um, I'm I'm willing I'm willing to give them that. It's not the first time he has peeled somebody's face off. Uh, it's a little clean, but uh, well, it's clean. Also, like it's a mo- it's a movie. Like, who cares if like car glass doesn't actually break like that or whatever? Like, yeah. it's you know, no one cares. But the thing that that's just weird about it to me is like his name is Leatherface. It's not Skin Face because he he doesn't he doesn't just take people's faces and wear them. He he takes people's faces and like suns them. He knows how to tan hide. Like, that's a whole point. They're leathery faces. Because it's human skin when it's been tanned is that's I mean that like tanned skin is leather. It's not wet flesh face. Like he doesn't wear and, like a dead person like like I think like, you're I think you're getting a little too hung up on this on this aspect. I would I just I went into this thinking it would be like old leather face like still living in the same like kind of home. Like not the same home exactly, because of course not. Uh, cause they would easily be able to find it again. Like after the events of the original, kept, but you're expecting that he's kept his, his faces. Yeah. He, he's kept his leather. His, it was his, his thing. Why would he quit doing it? I, yeah. I think uh, just a tangent off of that. Like I thought there was one really clever point with, uh, leather face taking mama's face off earlier. Um, when mama's talking to, uh, one of the, main girls yeah. she says oh i wish i would have known you were coming i would have put my face on yep and then he puts her face on yeah and you know like i i kind of i kind of get it you know like in in the original he's like at the dinner table he's wearing a woman's face with makeup on like she's his surrogate mother she dies he must become mother so he has to cut her face off and i mean the much like the first the original movie this this film takes 
place in the span of one day and one night. So he didn't have time to tan the face. I'm sure if he had had time, he would have done everything right. But he was in dire need of a face. So he just... How cool would it have been, though? He just made do. But I'm like... If, like, I, like I, she died or whatever, and, like, several days passed, you know? I mean, I'm not saying that it wouldn't be cool. And, like, the hipsters had had enough time to, like, set up the town or whatever. I'm not, the I'm, Zoomers I'm not saying whatever. that it wouldn't be cool, that it couldn't be done. I just don't... I The fact that the face has not literally been tanned into leather is not, a, is, is not one of my many hang-ups with this movie. Yeah. Uh, it's just... His name's Leatherface. Yeah, but what are they gonna do? Change his name for this movie? He had he had yeah. to, he had to make do with what he had. <laughs> yeah, so he's just wearing some <clears throat> call him flesh face. He's just he's just wearing a, a a bitch's face. But I think the mask looks pretty good. I like it. He looks kind of like a sad clown. He does look like a sad clown, and I like that. He, he looks like the clown in Dead by Daylight. He looks like a sad clown. He's got a very droopy, kind of frowny face. Unlike the other ones, he hasn't sewn multiple pieces of face skin together to make, like, a, a full head mask. You know, he just kind of rips her face off and drapes it on his own. It's just one one solid piece of face. Mm -hmm. And I think it looks... I think it looks good. Piece of face. I think his character is handled badly, but I appreciate the aesthetic of Leatherface in this movie. One of the only things I like about this movie. How do you feel about the color correction? <laughs> I thought it was very generic vibrant. and bad. Yeah. It, you know, it looks that like blue orange color palette is so generic <laughs> Netflix movie. Have, have you guys ever seen the meme of it's like the poster of like Revenge of the Sith next to the poster of some Steven Spielberg movie next to the poster of something else and they all have like that same like orange blue color palette and so it's like, man I can't wait to fit watch this whole trilogy. Have you ever seen that? It, it really just sums up to me like how I felt about like the orange blue color in this because like it, it, it like, every like every movie every poster movie. yeah every movie poster and like from like the the late nineties like up through the two thousands like like ha, ha, did, did that orange blue poster. I think using blues in this film is such a misstep because you know the first film is all about heat and yeah r really feeling that oppressive Texas heat. And by emphasizing blue and rain and nighttime so much... It doesn't feel you don't, hot. Yeah, you don't get none that of, mustiness. None, none of our characters are sweating in this movie. They're all picture perfect. Their hair is perfect all the time. Even when they're covered in blood and goop and, you know, running around. It's just everything is so fucking clean that I don't like. I like the the design of Leatherface, but the aesthetic of this movie in general, I think, is a is a big big fucking miss the last thing that i liked about this movie was one particular moment i pointed it out when we were watching it. i said i thought that was clever one of the girls is hiding under the bed and redneck dude is coming up the stairs with his gun and leatherface hears him coming and he goes and he stands behind the door waiting for him to come in the room so he can jump out and murder him the girl under the bed reaches out with one foot and kind of taps like turns the mirror a little bit the standing mirror so that redneck guy coming through the door can see leatherface standing behind the door i thought that was cool that's pretty neat. i liked that that one moment in the even film. though from where leatherface is standing he would have seen her doing that yeah, I mean, I'm willing to, you know... That's pretty dumb. I'm, I'm willing to say it's like, okay... He does have goopy, he does have goopy flesh over his eyes, though, not, which does make wearing, it really hard to, I don't know, he's see. He's wearing a face, and so you know, he's, that's fine. he's probably focused on who's coming through the door. He's pro He doesn't know somebody's under the bed. He's not, like, watching the room, you know? So, like, I'll give it to him, but I, I, thought, I thought that was a, a, a clever little touch uh yeah, the, just about yeah. the only one in the movie you know you know why i have a problem with the flesh face and, and why like okay i don't i don't think it's a real problem let me, let me put that out there too it's not a real problem in the same way that like him using car glass is a real problem right it's like oh of course we all know that like car glass like shatters a certain way so you, it's not lethal right like that's a thing but like uh no one cares it's a movie we need sharp glass it's a horror film like that's fine mechanically it's important but the thing about it is that like the original Texas Chainsaw, right, is like is believable, you know, yeah. it's it's crazy and it's out there. But hey, man, out in the country, crazy things happen. And like, what if he's real? Like, that's scary. It's the kind of thing like that that can kind of really spook you out. Yeah, and, nothing, and like in this world, in, that, in this in reality, movie, nothing in that movie is impossible. Plenty of it yeah. is improbable. But I mean, 
the I, the whole character of Leatherface in in the beginning is based on Ed Gein, like that real shit, person who did real, real person things, who did make you know skin masks and wear them and shit. Like nothing, nothing in that movie is impossible. And again, in this movie, they have to turn Leatherface into an unstoppable killer. John yeah. Wick. They have to turn him into John Wick. Should, I mean, oh, yeah, that's man, a good point. Fucking John the chainsaw. Wick shit, he fucking takes a hammer and smashes the wall in Mother's room. As she's dying, she, she touches his face. She said, don't go in my room. Because uh, that's where she has walled up his chainsaw for some reason. Chainsaws are relatively common. You know, tools. Yeah, it wouldn't be hard to get get a hold of a chainsaw. Why would she keep it? Why would she presumably? Why would she presumably cut a hole in the wall, put the chainsaw inside, and then seal the wall back up? See, there's no there's, thought to that, right? No. And again, this is this is exactly why that person who worked on production said, like, turn your brain off, he, right? He pulls like, it's it, like, oh, yeah. you know, just you know, if you want to have a good time, just don't think about literally anything. Just be an idiot. He pulls it. Like, he pulls if you out of yeah, the wall, just be an idiot and have a good time. He cool. pulls it out of the wall after 50 years and it starts right up what doesn't like, have to put gas in or anything like, i get like visually right i up. guess it's cool like if you you don't think about it at all like him just but like, it, is, like, it is a it is a fucking john wick thing like he literally yep. could have just gone into a barn or something and found mm-hmm. a chainsaw or into a general store like yeah, there's there's any number like, of ways just like 2003 it's some darth vader shit there's any number of ways he could have gotten hold of a chainsaw but it has to be like oh i got it Lord help me, I gotta go back to the old me. You know, John Wick fucking taking a jackhammer and digging up his guns from his garage floor, you know, because Baba Yaga's back, baby. It's just so fucking stupid. It's so much of this movie is just, like, member berries and then, like, bad setup for okay payoff. Like, so many things set up for a payoff that's like, okay, that's cool, but it doesn't make any sense like the one of the women on the bus when Leatherface is killing everybody she manages to get past him and could just run out of the bus but she decides to stop and open one of the windows to try to go out the window and so Leatherface saws her in half is it a cool visual her getting sawed in half sure it is does it make any sense why she would have stopped running for the door of the bus and taken the time to open a window to crawl out it no it doesn't and like the bad setup makes the payoff unsatisfying. Yeah. It doesn't feel earned at all. No. Like like there's nothing like like it's a it's a really cool payoff to to something that wasn't set up. It's a great punchline to no joke. And uh yeah, it's like I'm I'm sorry, but like foreplay is important. You know? Like like you can't you can't be like, hey, why didn't you come? I don't know. Like you didn't like there wasn't any foreplay. Like like we gotta like you can't you can't just like surprise me. You gotta you know, there's a there's a dance. There's a you know, there's rhythm. Like Yeah, again, so look silly. at look at Piranha. Like you set up this obnoxious spring break culture of mm-hmm. all these frat bros and stuff and partiers. And then when there's chaos on the beach and you kill them all, at least there's, you know, caricatures there. I don't think we get any real development or even caricature of any of these people on the bus. Nope. They're just objects to be killed. Like, the one them. the one moment of caricature is the try anything and you're canceled, bro. Yeah. That's that's the one moment of caricature, but that's not a character who we've been introduced to previously. That's his one line. It's not he enough. He's just he is no. he is saying a single line to represent the entire bus full of people and then they're all getting killed and why do I give a shit? Yeah. yeah, if and, they would have had more, honestly, do th- scratch the cancel culture stuff, like scratch the you're canceled, bro, part of it. Have more of the obnoxious out of towner stuff. Yeah. And it would have been more justified. I, and are you more telling fun. me this town doesn't have a boutique bakery? I can't get Wi Fi here. I, I, Where am I supposed to get my bran muffins? I cannot believe this, but you know what we're, we're, we're recommending, right? We're asking that this movie was more like Halloween Kills. Because Halloween Kills gets that right. And again, hated that movie. I think it gave it a two. But like, I don't think but like, so. No, no, no. I, I, here's the thing, right? Like, like the, the sequences with, like, like the, the couple where he gets killed with a drone and, like, all that stuff, like, it sets them up a little bit first so that you're, like, you're at least, like, somewhat familiar with those characters, like, before, like, Myers kills them. Yeah, but you know, as we like, talked about least that episode, that. those are few and far between. Like, yeah. it's not... I, Halloween Kills is not a great example. Of yeah, that. Halloween Kills isn't a great example because it's 
it's still a blank mob. You know, yeah, like, like towards the end of that yeah. bit, but like yeah, helmed, like, like, helmed by these uh, member of these characters who were literally children in the first movie. Yeah, yeah, ass characters, you know. Yeah, it, uh, man. We we sort of we mentioned the return of Sally. Uh, we didn't. We haven't talked about like what she actually does in the movie at all. It's not which much. Is basically nothing. Yeah. Um. It's it. It's not Marilyn Burns. They didn't get. You know. They they. It's not. It's not literally a Halloween Kills where they got uh, the original actress back. But she comes. They tried in, to pull it off though. Like if you don't know your shit, then you would think that. They like, gave oh, her wow, a similar, they brought they gave her, her back. Similar haircut. Yeah. Uh, she's she comes in wearing a cowboy hat with a shotgun. She walks into the house. She points the gun at Leatherface. Is like, you remember you? Do you remember me? She like names her friends. It's like, why would Leatherface remember you? You're just one of like many people. Like, well, also had, like, oh, it yeah, you're, like you just okay. happen to be the one who got away. If and, Leatherface was like a wild monologuing villain, it wouldn't make sense. Like, if if Leatherface was like like like, yes, this was my nefarious plan. Ha! Like, I'm Leatherface. Like, like if if, <laughs> if that was a thing, like sure. Like, uh, even then, it would be dumb because it's like, no, I was just trying to kill everyone. I don't remember you at all but instead but instead he's a mentally disabled elderly man who has never spoken (laughs) he's mute who's a silent character he is mute as far as we know like like he 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 makes pig noises he literally grunts and squeals like an animal and yeah he's feral he's a feral man and uh like like she is upset and 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 so staggered that she decides not to get her fifty years vengeance on this man. She's she, been trying yeah, to find him for fifty years. Why does she not kill him? Instead of walking in and just immediately blowing his head off like she should have, she does that and then is so shocked and appalled when he doesn't remember her that she literally just lets him walk out the door. Yep. All the way out of the house. Why he doesn't kill her there? I don't know. He goes to her car where the two girls are waiting and tries to kill them. And, you know, then Sally shows back up and shoots him a couple of times. But because he's now an unstoppable Terminator, you know, he shrugs the bullets off. He de- he deflects. He deflects the bullets. Oh, my God. He deflects the buckshot at one point like a fucking Jedi deflecting a stormtrooper laser. Yep. Uh, he does that. He's he, he Darth deflects, fucking Vader. He, he deflects. He, he deflects is literally her, Darth uh, Vader again. He they deflects the one point. of her shots with his cha- with the blade of his chainsaw, which you know, like I ain't a I ain't a scientist. It's been two decades. I ain't since a scientist or an engineer or nothing, but I feel like a shotgun blast would, at, at the very least, bend just about any chainsaw blade, <laughs> especially one that has been sitting in an attic for well, fifty years. Also, but well, 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 no, no, but like like shotguns shoot pellets dog like like it's uh, she's not firing slugs like yeah. it, out, mm-hmm. out of that 12 gauge like it's 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 pellets you, he's like what like at that at that point like like he's about as 15 far, he's, he's about as 10 far feet away, away as we are right yeah now. like Five, like six feet like his whole body is hit presumably by that. presumably maybe he blocked it before it has a chance to spread not that range not yeah i mean well it, it's fucking stupid to begin with but the point is is then he impales, Star her, Wars, yeah. he impales her on his chainsaw and holds her up in the air. It's very epic and then throws her into the trash. She's somehow still not dead. She's able to shoot him again later. But, I mean, I don't, I don't even care to get too into the nitty gritty here. Our fucking characters uh, shoot Leatherface and he falls into the water and they think he's dead. Uh, you know, school shooting survivor girl. She used a gun to shoot Leatherface, so she's, uh, she sees. Well, and then the other sister uses the chainsaw, the chainsaw. against Leatherface. She like uppercuts him with the chainsaw. Which I thought were, that was kind of funny. Not gonna lie, it's kind of funny. And he falls backwards into the pool of water. But again, like, why didn't she like stab him or like cut his head off or something? Because of course they needed him to be able to come back. Uh, which is just just horrible for me, because uh, I I was saying at the end towards the end of this movie like I really needed Leatherface to die here so these same people can't make another one of these uh, that if they're gonna bring him back then they have to do another reboot and try again all over, uh, but no nah, he comes back and I I will say 
the last little scene is pretty funny because they like get into their test their like self-driving tesla and they like program it to the autopilot to take them back to austin yeah all their friends have been killed they think leatherface is dead yeah and and instead of like i don't know sticking around to make sure that like presumably like their friends have families you know yeah like, instead like, of like they, getting they somewhere have, and, like calling like, in the state police or something yeah like, like get help like, well we're just gonna go back to austin the older sister's like i always believed in you you're the strongest person i know and then leatherface appears behind her smashes the window drags her out and cuts her head off but what i thought was particularly funny is that uh the school shooting girl is like hanging out of the sunroof of the car as it's driving away because it's on (laughs) self-driving driving at like 10 miles an hour 10 miles an hour down the street of this like ghost town like screaming as leatherface holds up her sister's decapitated head the thing about that think about the earlier version of the script for that if she was paraplegic and couldn't leave the car that would make sense you know it would still be a little contrived but like she is fully mobile yeah she could easily get out of the car or you know anything yeah probably didn't want to get out of the car yeah and be with leatherface but what's what really is like the the last little uh like cherry on this fucking turd Sunday is that as you know the car is driving her away Leatherface does his little swing in the chainsaw around dance like he does at the at the end of the which makes no sense because at the end of the first one he's 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 dancing he's not he's hopping mad yeah he's not dancing he's he's angry she's gotten away he's yeah. he's furious like he's he's raging you know and in this i guess it's victory he's he's doing but it's just like it's yet another thing it's like it is just like remember this this happened in the first one but it totally misses like what makes that particular ending of the first one like so good mm-hmm. and uh, yeah and, and then it's over uh and it's over much like this podcast should be soon do y'all want to rate this do god yes do y'all yeah else? no i i want to i want to forget this movie one star out of five uh i'm gonna do something that many people should have done long ago <laughs> leatherface you canceled uh, half star. Oh my god! Um, I will say, I will say, just to you know, bookend our discussion. Texas Chainsaw Massacre has such a wide-ranging legacy, and the nice part of that is there's plenty of you know movies that have been inspired by Texas Chainsaw Massacre that are much better than this movie. Go the watch new- Honeydew. Uh, the, new, the new the new Ty West X movie that's coming, is coming out, out soon. soon. It looks like looks a good Texas version Chainsaw of Texas Massacre. Chainsaw yeah. Massacre. Maybe watch one of the several dozen good spin-off inspired movies instead sure. of this. Flaming or, Turd. Or just go watch the original. Never yes. gets old. Glee. Or watch the sequel, which I'm sure we'll be doing at some point very, very soon. Um, yeah, uh, I think... Uh, it would be hard for me to give this movie less than a two, uh, considering like it's a horror movie, it's a slasher film, and all the kills are good. But the fucking Columbine bit just really rubbed <laughs> me the wrong fucking way. And also hearing that like apparently the character was originally a paraplegic, and like that they got like backlash for like not having representation. And instead of like getting someone who actually was paraplegic or whatever, like they were like they just bullied into just entirely. not having like a paraplegic person at all in the film. And it's like cool. So now there's like no like quote representation or whatever of that at all fuck everything fuck everything about that that's really fucking stupid um not that i really have a dog in that race but fuck it 1.5 yeah i feel like i'm being generous but yeah 1.5 at least some of the kills were neat well, fuck this movie it, it is it, it is definitely worse than halloween kills yeah for sure definitely uh, worse than halloween kills and yeah. i and i and i do think uh because it doesn't have our, our army our army man in it 
it, it's not as it's not as good as two thousand three either. And at least two thousand three doesn't have like this modern like bullshit of like referential politics without actually saying anything. Uh, at least at least that is just genuinely dumb, and it does dumb like Darth Vadery things with it. But this thing does too, but it's worse. And like, yeah, I would I would rather have like shitty Darth Vader uh, fucking Leatherface than than this movie. Uh, I think you rated this one higher than the 2003. Did I? I yeah. Think so and Halloween Kills, I think. <laughs> one star. <laughs> you convinced me. One star. <laughs> Fuck this movie. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I I think that they just numbers. I'm just it's, it's all abstract. <laughs> like like if like the like if we're yeah like the, it's all rating, relative. It's a gauge. Like you know like like rating is a uh, is an estimation. It it, it can change just like what I had for fucking dinner that evening. Like well, yeah, anyone who takes ratings that seriously, like whatever. I mean, I I personally do still think the the 2003 one is a is a worse film, but like man, this close. one this was fucking terrible. Uh, between the three of us, it has received an average of 0. 0.8 out of 5. Wow. Uh, you know, I think we can all comfortably say that if you have any affection for the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you can give this one a big old fucking pass. Yeah, don't waste your time. Uh, next week, we've got another new movie. Uh, another movie where we're surely going to get into p- some political discussion uh, because we're going to be watching Shut In, the Daily Wire Ben Shapiro produced uh, horror film starring uh, ab- actual right wing madman Vincent Gallo. Returning after uh, like a, a 15, 20 year hiatus. We will talk, I'm sure, at length about Vincent yes. in the next episode uh true so, enigma yeah this is uh i i think this is this will be the probably the first movie we've talked about on the podcast that likely has like an explicitly political agenda uh, <laughs> yeah i'm so, so curious the I, trailer makes it out to have be like a, a faith film like a very christian, christian kind of deal yeah but like also it's like a horror movie I feel like that combo you don't see very often, so I'm it's, I'm curious. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be the um, well. We did rate this one. Oh, uh, we did. Yeah, uh, we, we did predict this one. This one. Yeah, we we predicted Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So for Rotten Tomatoes, um, I predicted it would have a six. TC you predicted a twenty three, and Cleve you predicted a seventy eight. It came out today. Do we even have yes, Rotten Tomatoes? Yes, we do. Yet? I wish we it do. was a seventy-eight. Right now, it's sitting at a thirty-two. Ah, okay. Um, I mean, I wish the movie was good enough to merit a seventy-eight. I don't wish that this movie got a seventy-eight. <laughs> I would never wish that. I'll I'll take it. I feel like I win that one by sheer luck of we're talking about it on the day it comes out. Yeah, I think that rating is going to go down in the coming yes. days. We'll revisit that next. But I'll week. but I'll take my Table I'll it. take my victory. Yeah. <laughs> we'll revisit but it next will. week if it changes too drastically. And what were uh, what were our, um, predi- our yeah? So collective average? rating. Uh, I predicted it would get a 1 out of 5. Uh, TC predicted 1.8. Oh. And Cleve, you predicted 4. Out nope. Of five. Oh. <laughs> well, I certainly yeah. didn't get it. Ben, you're you're very close. Yep. In fact, you would have been spot on if Cleveland hadn't lowered his rating. Oh, there. I definitely did not make that rating uh, uh, after. I, I, I definitely made that rating before I found out about the you're canceled oh, uh, yeah. scene. I think oh, before yeah. that aired. Yeah. But, uh, well... Which I never saw. I saw that in this movie for the first time. I didn't watch that trailer before yeah. watching this. Sponsor time. It's sponsor time. Ringing that sponsor bucket bell. There's only one left. Yeah, oh, my God. There's only one sponsor left? Well, shit. We're going to need to get some new sponsors out here. Um, I'm sure the, sol- the shelf will replenish us by yeah, the next, uh, next episode. Yeah, you know, joining the Patreon might might even help in, in some capacity. Ooh. Um, uh, We're sponsored by ourselves. We are. We, we could be. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, this week, it's always nice to have a lobster around the house. Um, that's an old quote from Garfield and Friends. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, this this episode, uh, this week is brought to you by me lobster that you're so fond of. Snip, snip. Uh, 
I, the, the snip snip was written in parentheses. I, I didn't have a choice. I had to read that. Otherwise, I would I would die. I mean, yeah, that's the horrors a part of, of the sponsor that's shelf. A part of the sponsor. You got to read so. the whole sponsor. You know, even when it it's something wild. But uh, I yeah, hear you're uh, fond of me lobster. I hear you're fond of it. Damn ye, uh, damn ye, you damn your farts. Look at ye. Look post, at post and cringe. Post and cringe. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what this movie did. <laughs> what? Look at you, post and cringe. Look at you, post and cringe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's very good. Oh, man. All right. Uh, that does it for us this week. Uh, like Cleveland mentioned, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash podpeoplepod. Uh, Look at you supporting us on Patreon. <laughs> Look at you supporting cringe. <laughs> support our cringe. Support our cringe. Please. Uh, it, but if you don't want to give us a monthly contribution, that's a okay. You can also support us by just uh, leaving us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Please and thank you. Please, and, Please thank. and thank. You can follow us on Twitter at podpeoplepod and at letterbox.com slash podpeoplepod, where you'll find a list of all the films we've talked about on the show with our average ratings and links to those reviews. You can follow me on Twitter at some spooky snake. I'm on Twitter at Mr. Sheets. And I'm occasionally tweeting for Light Arc Studios. We put out progress on It Stairs Back. You can also see my progress if you go uh, on other works as well. If you go to dreadxp.com, because I'm doing some fucking cool art for Dread XP these days uh, on all sorts of our games uh, and I'm just, I'm having a great, I'm having a great time. Ooh, ooh, uh, as this has come out, uh, as this episode is coming out, I think the demo for My Friendly Neighborhood is still uh, is still live. If it's not, I, I apologize because timelines, uh, we record this in the past and you are in the future. Uh, but anywho, if it is, go check it out, uh, <laughs> the My Friendly Na- Neighborhood demo. Um, uh, it's free. It's super fun. I've been uh, QA testing it and it's it's just a blast. And also did a lot of cool art in it. So if you look at all the cool posters in that game, all the cool puppet related posters and stuff, uh, uh, you know, it was, it, it's been a real delight working on that game. And so, yeah, go go check out My Friendly Neighborhood. Uh, go wishlist it on Steam. And uh, that'll be it from me. Well, thank you for listening. But always remember that if you don't like this, if you don't like this podcast, you're canceled, bro. 